on tonight's Atlanta Prep Rally. Rain, rain won't go away, but we hope that you're here to stay. No, not the Macarena, just plenty of mud and sweat. Tumbles and fumbles are coming your way, but you've got to understand that the ball is wet. Welcome to another edition of Atlanta Prep Rally, Metro Atlanta's only weekly high school football highlight show. From Alpharetta to Jonesboro, Conyers to Douglasville, watch your team each week through the state playoffs on Media One Channel 33. Tonight's Atlanta Prep Rally is brought to you by Cary Paul Conversion Vans of Decatur. We're here at the Longhorn Steakhouse to show you some of the most talented student athletes in the metro area right here on Atlanta Prep Rally. Hi, I'm Stan Autry of the Atlanta Journal and Constitution. And I'm Eric Hunter. Welcome to you North Clayton fans. We'll have your happy highlights in just a moment. Plus, our first look at Carver, Cedar Grove, Clarkston, Southside, and Meadow Creek. And we really want you to jot down this phone number. 404-634-7373 because thanks to the Longhorn Steakhouse later in our show, a chance for you to call us and win a $30 gift certificate plus $25 in cash. But now on to the highlights. We're going to start off with Douglas County going to North Clayton, followed by Dunwoody and Mays. Douglas County coach Bill Williams hopes tonight his team reaches the 500 mark. The first quarter was a defensive battle, but early in the second, North Clayton begins their march. Quarterback Tyrone Keith threads one in to Wilbur Warren as the Eagles move into Tiger territory. The drive ends when Stephen Allen dives across the goal line to put North Clayton up 7 to nothing. Looking to strike back quickly, Paul Kirby airs one out, but it's into triple coverage, and Edward Fletcher gets the pick off the tip. Now it's the Eagles' turn. On this drive, Keith uses his feet. Nice blocking, and he'll take it all the way down to the 15. Three plays later, Greg Horton does the honors, and it's 14-0 as Coach Don Chuckley's team hits the locker room. Now, start of the third, Douglas County comes out throwing, but the Eagles' Gary Edmondsall does the catching, and he will take it all the way, bringing great joy to his teammates. Now it's 21-0, and Paul Kirby realizes there's more than one way to skin a, well, a bird. Kirby will run, and what a great effort as he fights and lunges all the way down to the one yard line. He will take it in himself two plays later, but North Clayton's defense holds in the fourth to win this one 21 to seven. Now, why are these Dunwoody fans so excited? Well, three straight wins could do it and a three nothing lead here today, but I think it's this ball jarring hit by Armand Johnson and the recovery by Brandon Moore. But if that's not it, maybe it's running back Gordon Klingscale's great balance and speed as he puts Dunwoody up 10-0 on May. Well, the offense and special teams have a gold star, and now the defense does. Lucky number 13, Corey Reese gets the INT, and this leads to Austin Copper's second field goal of the afternoon. Boy, that one has plenty of extra, and it's 13-0. Now it's Idris Bashir's turn as he comes down with the ball and it gives quarterback Eric Stutzer a chance to get in on the act. Here he hits Tyrone Hicks for the first down, and it sets up Clean Scale's second touchdown and makes it 19 to nothing at the half. In the third, well, I can't describe it, so I'll just let you watch and enjoy. Hicks just picks it off the turf, and everything is going Coach Reese's way. In the fourth, Stutzer hits Mario Rosas to close it out, as Dunwoody goes to 3-1 and one and Mays while they drop to 1-3. and three. Next week, Dunwoody takes on Lovejoy and Mays, they'll go against Redan. We want to talk about North Clayton for a second. Stan in Region 5 AA. They're in Division A. They made the playoffs last year with a losing record. Normally, it's Cedar Grove and whoever else can fit into that second slot. This year, a little tougher for North Clayton, especially with Rockville County. Well, Rockville County seems to be uh, prospering from the move down from Quad A. They've got a new coach, and uh, Matt Fligg, and they've done a real good job. Of course, North Clayton, you always think of it as an explosive team, and uh, they're going to be a factor. Now, on the other side, the realignment really made this division difficult with Krim, uh, Westminster, and Lovett. 
and Krim is down a little bit from what they've been the last few years. I think the two private schools over there, especially Love It, are going to be the two that you're going to have to keep an eye on. All right, well, now we want to go to Quad A, Region 8 to be precise. Let's go out to Gwinnett County for a couple of games, starting with Shiloh and Parkview, followed by South Gwinnett and Meadow Creek. Parkview fans got a final look at Shiloh's Therese Hopkins Friday, but Shiloh got its first look at Shalane Parker, who scores a first-half touchdown to put Parkview up 21-7. Second half. Hopkins finds his go-to guy, Nathan Purvis, and the generals are rolling. But not for long. Watch Jim May throw Hopkins around like a rag doll, and Shiloh stalls in the third quarter. So Coach Jordan says, let's try something else. How about a rollout pass to Brian Bricks, and that means Shiloh is in Ryan White territory, and Superleg boots through the 25-yarder. Parkview lead is cut to 21-10. Shiloh has momentum. Get Kenny Nash in your backfield, and Parker is toast. The Panthers have to punt. Let the adventure begin. The snap is high, Danny Burnett can't handle it, and Kenny Nash comes into your screen with the blocked punt. It's loose and Jason McIntosh falls on it for the touchdown. Oh my, it's 21-17. Cecil Flo is not amused, but that'll be enough of that. Parkview hands off to Jamar Hayes, and he is gone. Where do the Panthers get all these runners? He'll go 92 yards in the fourth quarter to put Parkview on top for good. Two of Region 8's better teams play a great ball game, and don't be surprised to see either one in December. Burkmar High School was the site for Saturday's duel between South Gwinnett and Meadow Creek. South Gwinnett led 3 to nothing in the second when speedy running back Andy Thompson broke free on this touchdown run, giving the Comets a 10 to nothing advantage and placing Tom Lozano's Mustangs in a hole. It would get worse before it got better for Meadow Creek as South Gwinnett was driving again in the second when quarterback Darren Mitchum hit Eric Ford. Ford takes the ball inside the Mustang 15. From there, it was big number 31. David Casey barreling his way in from eight yards out, giving the cheerleaders good cause to break into the never-tiresome Macarena. Down 17, things did get better for Meadow Creek as Jason Ward does his best bowling ball impression on his way to the Comet two-yard line. Quarterback P.J. Mugen dove it in from there to cut the Comets' lead back to 10. Larry Williamson's defense would make the big play in the fourth as Mugen loses the handle, and Sarone Cheeks is there for the Comets. Eric Ford would add a little late insurance as the Comets win their first game of the year. Well, we got some turnovers uh, on, on kicking uh, teams, and that, that really helped us. Uh, you know, I, They were playing pretty good defense. They, they were very physical, and... Um, you know, I don't know whether we could sustain a drive or not, so those were big plays for us in the first half and getting a couple scores off kicks. South Gwinnett was the state runner-up in 93. Parkview did the same in 95 in Quad A. Always a talented and balanced region, uh, but out in Gwinnett County, are we going to see a finalist or a semi-finalist from Gwinnett? Well, in my opinion, the 8 Quad A region, the Gwinnett region, is kind of down this year. Parkview is not nearly as good as they were last year. Brookwood's a pretty good team, and they'll be there by the end of the year. But I just see a lot of uh, above-average teams out there this year. No finalists this year. Now, on paper, going into the season, it looked like the realignment would favor Shiloh and Brookwood, but uh, that may not necessarily be the case. No, they're going to have to watch out for Cedar Shoals. And people think of Cedar Shoals as a triple-A team. They only played there a couple of years. They're a quad-A team. They're used to playing good competition. Cedar Shoals is the team you got to beat. All right, Stan, well, now it's time to take a look at this week's Atlanta Prep Rally Player of the Week. Donald Houseworth, the two-way star for Clarkston, is our Kerry Paul Conversion Vans Player of the Week. His linebacker play helped shut down Southside in the second half, and he scored the winning touchdown in the fourth quarter from his fullback slot, a 17-yarder for Donald Houseworth, and he is our Kerry Paul Conversion Vans Player of the Week. Now let's go back to last week and take a look at the award presentation for our Player of the Week from last week. Thanks, Eric. Kerry Paul Ford, the number one conversion van dealer in the world, is proud to present this week's Player of the Week award to Matt Miller from Marist. Matt was very instrumental in a uh, win over Columbia High School, 21 to nothing. Uh, gained 125 yards, one touchdown, did a tremendous job. Very proud of you, Matt. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good job, Matt. Yeah, that's right, Matt. We hope you'll stop in or call Carrie Paul and find out all about their great deals or simply chat about high school football with Chuck Barrettini. He's quickly becoming an expert. Now we want you to stay with your experts on high school football 
because we'll have a veritable cornucopia of Cobb County North Fulton news and highlights straight ahead, including the Dean of Roswell's football team and highlights of their game versus Pope to boot. So hang in there for more Atlanta Prep Rally. Leo Mazzoni of the world champion Atlanta Braves. Thanks. After working in the majors for seven years, I thought I'd seen every pitch there was. Then I heard about Kerry Paul's $99 conversion van. At Kerry Paul Ford, you buy the chassis, and for just $99, you get all this. Talk about your change-ups. This deal's untouchable. Kerry Paul Ford's $99 conversion van at I-20 at Wesley Chapel, Decatur. Just like the Atlanta Braves, number one in the world. John's way. Their way. Our secret ingredient. And theirs. You see, most pizza delivery chains use dehydrated paste to make their sauce. Papa John's uses sauce made from vine-ripened tomatoes the day they're picked. Then sent on to our stores. We believe better ingredients make a better pizza. That's why there's everyone else's pizza and Papa John's. Welcome back, Atlanta. I'd like you to meet this week's good citizen, Tim Dean. Tim hails from Roswell High School, where he starts at offensive guard. He also plays some at defensive tackle and handles special teams duties. He's a member of the Hornet wrestling team and is a platoon sergeant for the school's ROTC program. He's a hard worker and fierce competitor and expects nothing but the best from himself. I don't know of a young man who has come into this season with more enthusiasm, with more involvement than Tim has. So I've just been pleased with him. He's playing on both sides of the ball. A good young man who shows up ready to work every single day. Besides that, he's heavily involved in school activities. He sets just an excellent example on the field and off the field. Bank of North Georgia is proud to sponsor tonight's Atlanta Prep Rally. Old friends, new ideas. Bank of North Georgia, member FDIC. Now it's time to go out to Cobb County and Region 6 Quad A. We'll start at Marietta with Scott Kozlowski as the Blue Devils took on the Walton Raiders, followed by Lassiter going to Wheeler, and finally Roswell went out to Pope to take on the Greyhounds. Walton entered Marietta's Northcutt Stadium with their heads held high to take on the undefeated Blue Devils. Marietta's Travis Zachary was a major factor, here picking up 15 yards, but Walton Steele would hold, and the Raiders' offense would take over. They would also have limited success. Matt Wayman showing he can scramble. The nice cutback, picking up a half dozen more yards. Ed Dudley's team didn't get too much farther as Matt Williams and Sean Payne for the Blue Devils stopped Doug Shaw cold. The Raiders would go scoreless through halftime. The Blue Devils had trouble getting on the board in the first half as well, in large part due to Walton's D. Look at Rob Nichols dive to knock away the pass that would have surely been six. Marietta showed some strong pass defense too. Matt Wayman rolling to his left, looks downfield. The pass is there and so is Mitrell Foreman. When he knocks it away, Marietta would get things rolling late in the second as Zachary comes alive. Dodging tacklers on his way to 313 yards for the game. That's a new school record. He would also score three times. This was the first of them. Score was only seven to nothing at halftime, but Marietta would roll as they beat Walton with the final, 31 to seven. Meanwhile, over at Wheeler's Corky Kell Stadium, a different kind of first half saw Wheeler take a 21 to seven lead. The Wildcats look to add to it in the third. Darnell Bird sees daylight, but go. He trips, he slips, and then he absolutely flips. He knew he had six points. Wheeler used the fake punch of perfection later in the drive. Scott Selby helping the Wildcats keep possession. The Lassiter defense stiffened, though, as a gaggle of Trojans swarming to the ball and getting it back in the hands of their talented quarterback, Stephen Galbraith. He would rally the Trojans in the fourth. He rolls out to his left and hits David Went. Wheeler coach Jeff Heron had reason for concern as Galbraith would hit Jeff Cameron for the nine-yard touchdown. Lassiter was within eight. The onside kick crucial for the Trojans' chances. But Luke Tilton single-handedly puts the end to Lassiter's hopes of a second-half comeback. 
you know, the weather hurt them some. I, there's no question. We got ahead, and then, uh, you know, the rains kept getting a little bit harder, and they were having to try to play catch up in the rain, and uh, that's not easy to do. Final score, Wheeler 21, Lassiter 13. Friday night, both teams are off. It was Pope's homecoming Friday. Hope your date wasn't a dog, and hope you decide to double cover Roswell's Jermaine Phillips in the future. First play from scrimmage, it will go 77 yards, and the Hornets lead it 7-0 right off the bat. Pope playing catch-up, and Brian Mulder finds Derek Milligan, who puts his team in position, but Roswell's defense was ready. John Hall finishes off Nick Johnson in the backfield. Moments later, the Hornets make a bigger play. Mulder to linebacker Brent Robida, and the junior runs up the sideline to put Roswell back in business. We're still in the first quarter. Coach Sparks, let's try something different and Derek Milligan would put in a solid game from his fullback spot, but Pope could never get it together. Roswell could, though. Mark Cottrell hits Chad Crane on the screen, and he rumbles for 30-plus and would also score two touchdowns in the first half. Roswell led it 29-0. Second half, the story was ball control. Chris Cole was the man, and despite a late Pope touchdown, Roswell blows out the Greyhounds 29-8 on the road. Coach Manis may be onto something here in 96. Coach Mann is building a, a really good program. He's been at Roswell for a long time. Not a perennial powerhouse like Marietta, but nonetheless, they're undefeated so far this year. And every two or three years, they put together a real good team. This is another solid Hornet team. A good quarterback with Mark Kittrell, a good fundamental team, and they're a playoff contender, obviously. A log jam in sub-region A there in Region 6 with Marietta and Roswell, but marked down November 15th. Well, November 15th, of course, is when Marietta and Roswell play. That's the last game of the season. It should decide first place in the sub-region, but in my mind, nobody's going to come close to beating Marietta in that region. Well, we're almost halfway through the regular season, and we're only halfway through tonight's Atlanta Prep Rally. Some hefty highlights from the city of Atlanta, and the recipe for tonight's Plays of the Week calls for us to just add some water and stir. Stan and I'll be back in a moment. I want to be an actress. I want to be a ballerina. A plastic surgeon. Cartoonist. When Guy Milner was a young boy, his American dream was to grow up and own a business. When I was working in my dad's service station at age 10, a car would come in and dad would say sometimes, this car needs a minor tune-up. And at other times, a car would come in and he would say, son, this car needs a major, major overhaul. I believe that Washington needs a major, major overhaul. Guy Milner has dedicated his life to building his career and building his community. I've lived the American dream. I want that possibility for every single one of our young people. Elect Guy Milner, U.S. Senate. Okay, that's a wrap. That was good, Mr. Milner. Well, thank you. I have a question. Do you believe in term limits? Absolutely. Good, because when I grow up, I want to run for the U.S. Senate, too. And if you were still there, I guess I'd just have to beat you. <laughs> Right, sports fans, it's once again time for the Papa John's Place Kick Contest. Our contestant is Doug McGregor from Meadow Creek High School. He's off, and the first kick is up, and it's through. He only needs to make one of the following two kicks to win, but he's running out of time. He had better hurry. He's only got 10 seconds left. The second kick, it's on its way. Oh, it's just short. He's got only five seconds left. He'd better hurry. Oh, golly, he's dilly-dallying, and oh, he's run out of time. The last kick, even if he makes it, is not going to count, but we'll see. And he missed it anyway. And Doug, we thank you for playing the Papa John's Place Kick Contest. Unfortunately, no pizza for Doug McGregor on this week's show, but we've got to give away some pizza next week. At least some breadsticks. <laughs> well, that'd be tasty. And now, the debut of four DeKalb County City of Atlanta schools on tonight's show. We start out with Kurt Whaler taking a look at a Friday night doubleheader from Grady Stadium as Clarkston visited Southside, followed by Carver and Cedar Grove, and that's followed by a North Fulton game as Milton took on Chattahoochee. 
Coach Jester and his Angoras look to bounce back from last week's one-point loss. And the Southside Lasers, well, they try to give them the chance. They cough up the football. Quick turnaround, fall on that one. That turnover will lead to an Allen Crabble 23-yard field goal. But Clarkston is also in the sharing mood as Philippe Clark soars up high just like a laser for the interception. Now, Southside quarterback Anthony Wynn decides it's a little safer in the air. Nice connection over the middle. But to the ground again he goes. He gets to the sidelines, and he's back in the air as he dives in just like a laser, and it's 7-3. to three. Now to the third, and Clarkston's back on top until Wynn again keeps it, and Southside retakes the lead 13-10. to 10. But with six minutes left in the game, the big man, Donald Howsworth, dare I say, sprints in from 17 yards to give his Angoras the victory. Next up for Clarkston is Lakeside, and for the Southside Lasers, they take on Central Carrollton. Now, next up on the twin bill, Carver and Cedar Grove. Special teams do damage early. First, the high-flying Kareem Bland blocks the punt and then scoops it up for the game's first score. Remember, I said first. That means there's a second. Special teams play number two. Adrian Andrews loses his towel and then runs right out of a defender's hands, and he'll take it all the way down to the one. Quarterback Stanley Hardy will sneak it in from there. Extra point no good, and it's 7-6. to six. And Coach Harrell wants to know who let Andrews get free. Hmm, no takers. Meanwhile, his Saints are driving. Paul Jackson breaks outside and takes it all the way down to the one-yard line. From there, Jason LaBelle will finish that off to make it 13-6. to six. And now, here come the Panthers. Hardy hits Andrews on a nice timing pattern, but the drive fails on a missed field goal. With time running out, Grant Hanna busts a 10-yard run up the middle to make it 22-6 Cedar Grove. They go on to win this one, 29-13. The Saints take on Lovett this Saturday, and for Carver, Towers awaits them on Friday. These young women happy to be on the sidelines for the battle between Milton and Chattahoochee, and here's why. It was a mess. Mike Ballisti tackled by no one. Later, Whit Whitaker running the option, and whoa, the ball slips away. But Ethan Atkinson is there for the Cougars. Chattahoochee could salvage the first three points of the game with a field goal in the third, but it's blocked. The game would remain scoreless. Cougars got the ball back, but their troubles continued. And this time, courtesy Chad Byers and Mike Cremier. Whitaker fumbles. You can't see it, but trust me, Milton would recover the ball. Eagles coach Peter Paul watching his team. And the scoreless tie is Joey Mulvain somehow gets in from three yards out, and Milton wins an ugly one in the rain. It was a battle in the mud is what it was. It's uh, very, very difficult uh, to play in conditions like this and expect to really get the most out of your football team. Right now, uh, we're just lucky to win the ball game. Anybody buddy could have won this game, and we just happened to get a couple of breaks that put us on top. And uh, when you play in the mud, it's tough. It really is. Clarkston off to a good start at 3-1 and one on the east side of that Region 6 AAA, but they've still got a long road ahead. Right, the real world starts this week when they play late side. Yeah, hey, wake up, you know, the party's over. <laughs> well, how about the party in the city of Atlanta? You know, we always see Douglas, uh, Krim has a good team. Uh, wh what does the city of Atlanta really have to do to get their teams up to the level uh, of the rest of the teams around Metro Atlanta? Well, even though Douglas had a step back last week they, when they lost that ball game uh, to Stone Mountain, people have to aspire to play in the same style as Douglas and Therrell and Krim. Those are the programs they're going to have to emulate until they do that and get kids interested in playing football they're going to struggle. Well, we're going to see, I think, still some good football ahead from the city of Atlanta. And as you can tell, rain was the order of the day on our highlights from this past weekend. And rain couldn't have been more evident in our plays of the week. They're delivering pizzas. Then an upstart came along. <laughs> and with each passing year, you saw more and more Papa John's cars. Perhaps that's because Papa John's uses better ingredients, and better ingredients make a better pizza. It's made us the fastest growing pizza chain in America. Have one delivered and find out why. 
community banking is what Bank of North Georgia is all about, our employees know our customers because they live in the communities they work in. So you're not just another number thrown into a category. From our tellers to our bank president, Bank of North Georgia is making sure each and every one of our customers is getting the personal attention and satisfaction they deserve. We make banking easy with a full range of products and services. Bank of North Georgia. Old friends, new ideas. Member FDIC, an equal opportunity lender. It's no secret. For years, our customers have depended on All-American Specialties for their trophy and awards needs. The passion and perfection put into each order has set All-American apart from the corner trophy store. Now, here's what you may not know. All-American Specialties is now the first awards dealer in Atlanta to come see you. We know your time is valuable. Call All-American for a free consultation, and we're on the way to your business, church, group, or association. Imagine your own in-house awards department. That's All-American Specialties. Once again, setting the standard. We're here at Riverdale High School. We really don't have a lot of time to think of some funny theme. We're here preparing for state, and we just want to show you, the people, what we're doing to get our team ready to play football. First, me and my teammates are going to show you our pregame routine. Go! Come on! Get it! Ah. Up! Ah. On the ground! Ah. Up! Ah. Up! Ah. Up. Ah. Up. Ah. 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 Now that we're physically ready for the game, we got to get ready emotionally. Well, uh, number one, uh, you know, we got everybody here together. We, we're a tight team. That's the way it is. You know, we get down and everything, and we're going to show you how we get crumb. Well, that's it from Riverdale. We'll see y'all at State. Back to you, Eric. Well, the players in Riverdale may have their own way of preparing for the game, but we have a unique way of preparing for this show. Don't right, we? We, we, we do our own stretching. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I, I've had enough already. All right. Well, we've got to take a look now at our Longhorn Steakhouse long run of the week. You call us on Wednesday night and tell us which of these runs was the longest, and you'll win a $30 gift certificate from Longhorn Steakhouse plus $25 in cash. So was it A, Adrian Andrews kickoff return for Carver against Cedar Grove, or was it B, Roswell's Jermaine Phillips and his catch and run against Pope, or was it C, 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 C. Jamar Hayes' incredibly long run from C. Parkview C. Run. against Shiloh? Well, we hope you'll give us a call at 634-7373 and tell us which was the longest run. And now we've got Stan and Mitch Sneed from the Clayton County Extra doing our extra point. You know, Mitch Sneed was telling me the other day how he admired Jamar Hayes and what a great run he had there. All right. But Mitch Sneed says uh, these are uh, not for entertainment purposes. You can bet all you want <laughs> on these this week. <laughs> He's got Henry County over Heritage, Salem over Stockbridge, Riverdale over Eagles Landing, Woodward over Jonesboro, Westminster to beat North Clayton, Mount Zion over Stone Mountain, Dunwoody over Lovejoy, Forest Park over Banneker, and Southwest Cab over Morrow. And on second thought, you, you probably don't want to bet with no, these after all. No, don't want to listen to Mitch. But we do appreciate him helping us out, and we appreciate everyone here at the Longhorn Steakhouse. We'll see you again next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So for Stan Autry of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, I'm Eric Hunter. We'll see you under the lights.